7 returns. America's number one adventurer, K-7, from United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. We take you to secret agent K-7's headquarters. This is K-7 speaking. Send in special agent M for assignment. At once, K-7. Special Agent M, reporting for duty. Agent M, for the first time in many months, we have been called upon to help solve a drug case. Narcotics are being smuggled into this country in large quantities. The authorities here believe that more than drug peddling is behind the activities of the ring responsible. They have seized a number of peddlers, but they have not found the source of supply, nor identified the man or men behind the ring. There is little information. Here are the records. Investigate and keep me informed. Agent M studied the records. One fact stood out. All of the peddlers arrested had been picked up in one section of the city a poorer neighborhood bordering on the slums. That evening with Ivan, he walked slowly through its dark, deserted streets. Every city has at least one section that looks like this, M. New York, Paris, and London. These streets differ only in the nationality of the people. Uh, Yes, Ivan. These houses were once great mansions. It's hard to tell behind which of the shuttered windows drugs are being sold. I never could understand how people could start using narcotics, M. How do thousands become enslaved? By smoking drug cigarettes, Ivan. That's only a step from that point on. Now, I'm going to begin this case by attempting to discover where those cigarettes are sold. Now, we'll begin with the first step and work backwards until we face the man or men behind the ring. Now, we're coming to a corner. This street looks as if it ran back to... Em, what's the matter? Do you know that man who passed this? Uh, No, Ivan. Did you smell the smoke from his cigarette? I didn't notice. Ivan, that man was smoking a drug cigarette. I'd recognize that particular odor anywhere. I want you to find a cab and go back to your hotel. I'll get in touch with you later. What are you going to do? I'm going after him. I'm going to try and make him believe I'm a drug user. Perhaps he'll tell me his source of supply. Be careful, Em. Have you a match, monsieur? Uh, Here is one. Oh, thank you. Where can I buy one of the cigarettes you have? Uh, Why do you want to know? I've got to know. I haven't had one today. I've just come to this city... Where can I buy them? How do I know you are not from the police? Do I look like the police? I tell you, I've got to have one. I've just come to this city. I don't know where to go. Oh, you've got to help me. Well, you look all right. Go into any one of these small stores. Most of them handle them. What do I ask for? Put your money on the counter. Say that you smoke a special boy hand. They'll know what you mean. If they have them, they'll give them to you. Tie that store across the street. Thank you, monsieur. Thank you. M purchased two of the special cigarettes in the store that had been pointed out to him. 
He then returned to his rooms. There, with Yvonne's help, he tested the cigarettes in the small temporary laboratory he set up. There's no doubt about it, Yvonne. Each of these cigarettes contained drugs. Now, I don't wonder their use is widespread. I had no trouble buying them. Can't the store selling them be closed? Yes. And I'm going to close them. Getting their addresses is going to be your job. What do you mean? Tomorrow, I want you to dress in old clothes and return to the neighborhood we were in tonight. Oh, you want me to check every store? Exactly. Try to buy these cigarettes. Now, you know how to ask for them. Keep a record of the addresses of all places where you succeed in making a purchase. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to have a look at the Custom House records. This terrible business has got to be stamped out. We've made a beginning. The next day, Yvonne went from one small store to another. She found that more than half of them handled the special cigarettes. She'd been working nearly three hours when two men stepped up on either side of her. All right, you. Don't try to run. Oh, let go of my arm. Quiet. What do you want? That list of addresses you've been making. <clears throat> I thought so. You've got the address of every store you've been to, haven't you? Walk over to that car at the curb. And don't attempt to attract any attention. Where are you taking me? You'll know the answer soon enough. Get in. Keep her covered, Badass. later, Yvonne faced a short, stocky man who sat behind a great desk. He studied the list of addresses she'd made through thick-lensed glasses. Mm, you have been thorough, mademoiselle. Why did you make this list? I wanted cigarettes to take with me. I'm going away, and I didn't dare to try and buy them all in one store. You have not answered why you made the list. I thought it might be useful someday when I return. You lie, mademoiselle. You work with the police. Oh, that's not true. I've told you why I want the list. You've taken it. What more do you want? The truth? Who told you to do this? Hmm. So you refuse to answer. Well, there are ways to make you talk. I wouldn't advise you to attempt them, Baldung. So, you also know my name. Perhaps you can explain that, too. Well, I... Uh, I heard one of your men address you. My men never speak to me. Only one or two of them have ever heard of me. I ask you again... Where did you learn it? I refuse to answer. Eh, no matter. It is your bad luck, not mine. Do you know what happens to those who interfere in my business? They are found sometimes in the bay. Not this time, Baldung. It might interest you to know that the police have you trapped. You can't even leave this building without being arrested. <laughs> Mademoiselle, you have courage, but you lie very badly. The police have never heard of me here. I'm a harmless importer of teas and spices. This firm which I purchased has been here many years. I have never even been suspected by the police. I'm very sorry for you, mademoiselle. I have uh, never ordered a woman killed before. You wouldn't dare. You possess too much information. Only two of my men know my name and have seen me. Others see me once. And then I make sure they never have a chance to speak. It must be the same with you. Who is it? Clint. What do you want? Open the door. Wait. What do you want? I told you I did not want to be disturbed. There is a man here who refuses to go away. He insists on seeing you at once. Tell him he will have to wait. I refuse to wait, Baldwin. Don't try to close your office door. I have a gun. Uh, what do you want? Why have you come in here like this? I have just come from the customs house, Baldwin. I want to ask you some questions. Suppose we step inside. Uh, both you and this man with you. Em, is that you, Em? Yvonne, what are you doing here? This man, Kletz, followed me on the street. He forced me into a car and brought me to Baldung. Baldung directs the drug ring. I'm sure of it. Search them, Yvonne. Make sure that neither of them have a gun. You'll never prove that I have anything to do with drugs. I wouldn't be too sure. Well, Kletz had a gun. Baldung is unarmed. See if it's unloaded. It's fully loaded. Well, then keep it, Yvonne. Now, Baldung, I want you to answer some questions. I have nothing to tell you. According to the custom records... 
You have imported nearly 20 times as much tea and spices as this company had before you bought it last year. How do you explain that? My business is good. You lie, Balding. This company was bankrupt when you took it over. You've never made any attempt to sell the products you handle. Those facts are what brought me here. They dovetail very nicely with the fact that you seized my assistant on the street and brought her here. Well, it is all very interesting, but you have no proof. No? Suppose we look around, Baldung. Open that door behind you, Ivan. I thought so. Bales of tea. I'd like to open one of those bales. You have no right to come in here and destroy property. Then I'll take the right. Keep them covered, Ivan. Oh, here's the knife they use. I'm going to rip open the bales. Em, look. One pound tins of contraband. There must be at least 50 of them. Let's see what's in them. White powder. Em, look out. Oh. Hit both of them. Get me a doctor. Don't let me die. I, I, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Don't let me die. Ah, it's nothing but a flesh wound. The prison doctor can take care of you, Balding. I place you under arrest for smuggling. <laughs> of drug rings have been linked directly with the international situation. Drugs corrupt users morally and physically. Victims become easy prey for spies and those who would undermine a country. Listen for my next story. This is K-7 speaking.